Welcome back to you, baby dolls. Welcome, welcome. There is FUD circulating around on Twitter about the SEC's next move. And apparently they want to get the DOJ, which is the Department of Justice or Department of Injustice, if you think about it, on Binance to charge them with some criminal allegations. Now, this is all circulating from John Reed Stark. And Mr. Stark is an SEC, former SEC dude. And if you can tell by the length of his descriptions, he's an absolute boomer. Who the hell is going to read all of this? Like, thank you very much. Literally, 90% of the comments are like, bro, <laughs> no one has 14 hours to read through this. Like, <laughs> this isn't a stock market, you know? So he's basically thrown all these things out that the, the SEC is planning to do. Obviously, we know who the SEC really works for. It's the US Federal Reserve. It's the banking cartel. They're just trying to take down crypto. Surprise, surprise. No way to surprise. So he's basically saying that there's all these allegations about Binance and CZ, et cetera, which is, you know, it's very interesting. He has a previous tweet and he says, get out of crypto platforms now. And he's been saying, I can't see it any plainer. He also mentions that he was telling everybody to get out of Coinbase and Binance for a long time. You know, it's very interesting. I'm very proud of everybody in crypto. If you go to the comments, people are saying, saying to him, isn't that funny? You were telling us all of these things, but none of your concerns were anything to do with FTX. Like, oh, you just happened to miss the biggest Ponzi of all. Jeez, $10 billion, a Ponzi, right before our eyes. It's not like you were getting bribed or anything, so this is just what it is, friends. So, you know all this junk, all this stuff? Don't worry about this, but this is ex what's circulating around, and that's why I'm telling you, even though it's, it's all trash, don't worry about Binance. You shouldn't even be on the exchanges anyway. If you got spare money, just move it off. Move it off, um, withdraw it out, put it on your hardware wallet, put it on Ledger, move it out. If you're in a country that you trust the exchange and they're just like a spot-only exchange, maybe withdraw it there, maybe convert it to Ethereum, withdraw it there, then go play with, then do something with it later. Maybe you can play around with it later. I really advise you, please use a hardware wallet, man. Get off the exchanges. Exchanges are trash. Now, don't even worry about all these guys, what they're saying. It doesn't really matter, right? Just look at Bitcoin's prices, all right? Look at Bitcoin's prices. If this was a concern, we, I'm telling you now, people front run the news. The SEC, the government have insiders. I promise you, if this was going to be the end of the world, we'd be down here. All right. If it was really the end of the world. And we would get the news down here. So we wouldn't get it up. You don't get be told, you don't get told the good news at the tops. Uh, sorry, you don't get told the bad news at the tops. Bad news always comes at the bottoms. And you're thinking, wait, that doesn't look like a bottom. Well, how about surprise, surprise to you? I mean, like, Ines, this is why it's it's relative. It's all relative. Is this a bottom? Yeah, to some people, it's a bottom. Like, hey, oh, Bitcoin's down like 18% off the top. People want to reload for another swing trade. Who cares if you go down? Man? Don't worry about these little things. There's always boomers come out, make these like 15-page essays talking about corruption, all this and that. I'll tell you right now, if you're new to crypto, welcome, welcome, friends. Binance have never had one single theft accusation at all. Their market makers aren't dodgy. I've traded on them. Everybody's traded on them. If there was anything dodgy anywhere near to the level of FTX, we would know. They're not a dodgy like BitMEX was with their fake liquidation engines, right? BitMEX were actually causing chart patterns that go like this, like all the time. They're just running the stops all the time. You don't see that anymore. Binance is way more fluid. It's going to, they have, they got like 50 billion. I think it mentions in the article, CZ's got 20 billion of personal wealth, basically. So look, this thing's going to drag out for two years. They're going to drag it out. They're going to keep going through the information. They're going to try and release bad public stuff. So this is their plan. Their plan is just to get the shackles out and so they can buy themselves more time. So when you see this, just who cares, man? What, what can we do? What can we do? I'm just here to tell you as a responsible peanut brain, get your money off the exchanges. Just get it out. You shouldn't even be there on the way anyway. And obviously... We want to live in the decentralized world. It was why crypto was made in the first place. If you could just make these imaginary tokens that were traded only on exchanges, then of course, someone would have thought of this idea a long time ago. But the whole per whole point of this is to be on the blockchain and we have solutions for everything. So if you find them too complicated, you need to spend a bit more time because this is where the asymmetric reward is. If you wait for it to be so easy that, you know, even Apple's got a wallet. If you're waiting for the iPhone to give you the wallet, well, then it's probably too late, right? Probably Bitcoin's over 100K by now. And everything is just way too late. The best games are gone. Okay. So don't worry about these. We're going to delete them. All right. I am thinking about what's coming up next. Let's focus on the positives. We have CPI. I've already made video and I've made some 
tweets, right? Please like, subscribe, or button, and all share with your friends and your family. There is CPI coming out. And the reading, if you, if you look at here, friends, so this is the website here is, by the way, I love, this is my favorite website. It's forexfactory.com. You go to forexfactory up here.com. It should be forward slash calendar. But if you just go to the website, you go click up at the top, click calendar. If you don't click calendar, you only see one day's viewing. You want to see the whole week. So you can't look too much in advance. They know when the data is coming out, but you don't have the estimates from the um, from the the analysts and stuff. So these guys will automatically fill in all the estimates, and you can see there's different columns up here. You have forecast, previous, the actual. The actual gets updated when it comes out within 30 seconds. So this is just interesting to look at, and obviously the red is what you want to wait for. The red is what you want to see. Now, don't worry about all of these other countries. Europe, I love yous, but sorry. My um, friends in the UK, I love yous, but sorry. Oh, even Australia, there, no one cares. You know what I mean? We're all here for the US of A, the United States of all the Americas. And of course, the big ones come out. So you'll get used to these over time, what actually, say, moves the market. But what's most concerning is obviously the CPI. This is like super, super, super hot. And you can see this, right? You have to change it to your time, by the way. You go to the settings. And this is how you track everything. And um, if you go here, you'll be able to look at, well, let's quickly have a look at, you see, see, you have the US core PPI. This is the Wednesday one. So we want to go to the Tuesday one. We have core CPI. We have CPI coming out here. Not core, um, They release everything at once. And you just be able to see, you can see on the right-hand side, if you actually just go back here, you see this CPI Y on Y. That's the year on year. And the MM is the month on month. So, you just want to have a look at both because sometimes the market's just thinking different things. It's just you don't know how the insiders and the scamsters are pricing in the future. For example, this CPI, for example, you see this 4.1. Now, we're probably we're probably not going to get a giant number under it, but like just imagine if the number came out 3.9. So this is what I'm showing you, like I'm sharing with you how you can like read markets. Do you get a bit of a read on the sentiment? So to see a 3.9, because that puts a 3 in front of the number, I believe that everyone will be like, wow, they're getting back down to the 3s already? You see like, like that that type of optimistic, bullish approach to that, when really it's not the end of the world. Like the job's still got to get done. We've still got to leave rates where they are to keep going. But this is the type of, this is the world that short-term trading and news event trading has to revolve around. If you don't even want to waste your time with it, you don't have to. But I just want to share that with you because this type of this type of little thing, right, it's only good for like, what, five minutes, 10, 15 minutes max, and you can get the move wrong as well. And you have to think about what you'd want to punt. So a lot of people playing in this, I see a lot of people on Twitter, they're trying to play this. They're going to get absolutely destroyed over the next 12 to 18 months because what's happening is, see, everybody believes CPI is super, super, super relevant all the time, but that's actually false. CPI is not always relevant, friends. Do you know there was a two-year period where CPI was basically near irrelevant when I was trading bonds and stuff? Yeah, because it was just not moving. Nothing shocking was happening in the world. This two-year period, I couldn't believe it. Nothing, it was barely any moves. It was like maybe like two out of 10 months in the year would barely move. So, when you're looking at these, the people focusing on this now, they think they have an edge here. Like I've seen some traders on Twitter, they're like, oh yeah, when the CPI was hot, I'd, I'd get short and I would bet on the market going down. When the CPI is down, I bet on it going up. You start, I'm starting to see some big fake outs now because what happens is the market learns. The market gets to learn things. So even though we have like this, oh, this Dem Department of Justice and this Binance thing coming on, this, we process it. We go in further. Like, remember why you're even here. And every, everything gets smarter. Everyone gets smarter because everyone's trying to jip each other. <laughs> that's, that's the truth, right? So this CPI coming out, this number 4.1, this is huge. If you want to look at this, friends, see this column up here, previous? Look at the previous one is 4.9. As I explained to you in videos, because the US, the CPI used to be, right? This is it used to be 24 months. It used to be zero to 24 months going backwards. But now, actually, I should start from here. Instead of 24 months backwards, right, they cut this off. Now they only look at 12 months. And it's only 12 months. So month 13 is gone. But what happens now in a few days, or well, literally in like 36 hours from now, when the data is released, month 13 um, in the past, that was a full plus 1.0% reading on the CPI. And guess what? We remove that now. It's gone. We just get to delete it out of the data. So that's why a lot of people get confused. Uh, I'm very surprised. I'll keep educating you and sharing with you because you're a baby doll baby cake with a straight back and fluffy slippers. I let everybody know, hey, 
The data goes back only 12 months. Well, when I say CPI is going down, maybe a lot of people get triggered because they go, hey, the prices are still up. Yeah, but no one cares because look, this is the scam, friends. If you had, let's say you had fluffy slippers and they were $100 today, and then next year they became $200, well, your inflation is plus 100%. You're like, wow, that's too hot, that's too hot. But guess what? Imagine in the third year, they are now $204, right? What's that? It's like 1.2 or 2%. Think about that, friends. That's only now a plus 2% CPI. You're like, wow, we got CPI down. No, you didn't. You didn't actually get CPI down. You just waited time. So think this is exactly what's happened in the economy, by the way. This is, see this 100 bucks? This was 2020, right? And then 200 bucks. Now we have 2021. And now we're moving into 2023. You're seeing it start to slow down, right? You're seeing it start to slow down. It's the rate of change going up. And now you, now you see the numbers are all rigged. The numbers are just rigged. That's it. They know what they're doing. This is why you're looking at this number. You're like, how is inflation going down? Well, now it is. It's a rate of change. That's why. So macro is actually looking pretty good. This is great because the market obviously is going to welcome interest rates. Just imagine. So right now, the US Fed interest rate is 5.25%. I want to show you another trick quickly on, on here. If you go to, if you, when you click on the calendar, right, if you scroll all the way down, the page, you can get all the interest rates by the main currencies here, right? Always look at the US one because everyone else is useless. <laughs> Sorry, rest of world. Yes, we're all useless. So the US is 5.25%. So this is how you kind of understand, okay, if they're 5.25% now, right here, if they're 5.25% and CPI after tomorrow, the reading goes down to 4.1, which is what they're expecting. E even if it's 4.3, even if it's kind of hotter than expected, you are still over 100 basis points, so a full 1% over the inflation rate, and it's been dropping like a rock. So this is super important. That's why the market looks forward. If the if the US Fed comes out and their FOMC is this week as well, by the way, right? So you can always find it. You see here, I went through. I went. This is obviously my time, but if you go through yours, you'll be able to see FOMC right here, and it will tell you what the expected rate is as well. And you know there's a conference. The conference is where they explain their thoughts and everything. So you know this time. So the CPI is going to come out before it. And then, hey, if the CPI is like everything just goes as normal, which is it's basically all programmed, once it all gets put in and the, the, the headline reading is going to be US Fed is succeeding at their role because inflation is now down in the low fours. That's the type of psychological impact that will be put out there to the market. And then, hey, you have the US Fed saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, we don't need to hike rates anymore. We're going to hold and be data dependent. That is how they change their language. Once they say that, you're just going to start to see people say, uh-oh, what's going to go happen here? You know what I mean? But the smart money, right? So the quote unquote, the FOMO money, the weak money, they're not going to do anything because they're waiting for the rate cuts. They want the Fed to print money and say, we are printing, we are cutting 50 basis points. They're not going to get that. When that happens, that's going to be probably market tank time. So the market's smarter now. What they're doing now, they're waiting for this conference. If the Fed says, hey, we're holding, and just to let you know, remember the Fed watch tool, the CME Fed watch tool, which I put in my link, I made this uh, video description as well. You go to the Fed watch tool here, and you can see right now, so it's 71% for a hold. You can actually look up here for a shortcut. No change, 70%. They don't like to spook anybody, right, when they do this. So if this was wildly mispriced, they would be sending their henchmen out to the media to tell you, ah, uh, we don't know about that pricing. They, they throw words out there to manipulate it with their words. It's kind of funny. It's called, we call it jawboning. <laughs> That's literally all they do. They just talk the market and they beat it into place unless they have to bring out the big nuclear weapons. All right, friends, so you learned something today. Most importantly... You're a baby doll, baby cake, and we're going to make it keep your fluffy sippers on. And please, withdraw your money from the exchanges, Binance, yada, yada, whatever. There's going to be new FUD next month. We'll forget about this, okay? Like, subscribe, button, or catch you in the next one.